Good day. Welcome to the course on Smart Materials and Intelligent System Design. And we will be focusing on energy harvesting today. Now, in the last lecture, what we have studied? We have talked about sensor applications, we have talked about MEMS motions, MEMS based accelerometers, various applications of MEMS. You know, we have specifically talked about two fundamental processes that is used to develop the fundamental building block of MEMS that is the silicon. And then we have also talked about how to develop MEMS using tape casting, sputtering etcetera and the processing techniques. Now, after doing all these things, we have also said in the applications that you use MEMS based systems mostly for sensors and actuators. But there is a very interesting third category that is coming up with the help of smart materials, because these are the only materials which has this transduction capability. You remember what is transduction? That means, something which can transduction that term I have said in the very beginning, something a material which can transform the energy, transform the energy. So, for example, mechanical to electrical, the transduction capability or electrical to mechanical. There can be magnetic to these things also, you know there can be photoelectric effects uh, uh, or uh, the light to electrical etcetera also, but this is just an example, these are examples. Okay. Now, this transformation of the energy gives us a beautiful advantage that if something can transform the energy, what if I transform the mechanical energy in a system and store them in the form of electrical energy. Then whatever is not desirable for us will become very much useful for other applications. That is what you know will bring us to the context of today's lecture which is energy harvesting. We will talk about its application. We will say specifically about piezoelectric energy harvester, energy conversion with a linear model, a basic system and piezoelectric system response. So, let us look into what is this energy harvesting system. So, these are the systems in which you have the energy conversion process by which electrical energy can be harvested from various ambient energy sources. Ambient energy could be solar, ambient could be thermal, ambient could be wind, noise, vibration, so many things. If you look at solar energy outdoor, what is the power density? 15,000 microwatt per cm cube, very, very high, but solar energy is not available all throughout the day and night. So, and, and indoor it is quite low, 10 to 20. You may have mechanical vibrations on the other hand for various systems. So, that is about 300 microwatt per cm cube or air flow about 360 microwatt per cm cube. So, all these things which are actually you know like a throw away part of mechanical energy can be converted back to electrical energy and stored in the system. That is what is the harvesting refers to. So, mechanical strain from machine vibration is one of the most available ambient energy sources that is found in civil structures okay, and like bridges for example okay, and machines or in human bodies even. And among the energy conversion principles that are generally used to convert this mechanical strain into electrical energy, piezoelectricity is known to be one of the most effective and practical way of actually storing, transforming the energy and storing. So, we will mostly focus on piezoelectric based energy harvesting. What are the various motivations for us to do that? Well, one is of course, to get rid of limitations restricted by traditional power sources such as you need batteries, electrical grids etcetera. So, wherever you need a little bit of power locally to generate, you can use this system to make for example, portable electronics and industrial systems intelligent 
and independent of external power supply. You might have seen many such watches which actually runs by extracting energy from our motion. Okay. So, that you know is a portable electronics example. To convert waste energy, energy which is otherwise waste into useful energy for us or to generate green energy, this is a very green energy there is no byproduct of it. Uh, in thermal power plants you know how much of pollution will create. Okay. In nuclear plants you know how much of radioactive pollutions we create. This is a completely green source of energy. And also sometimes when you use it for vibration control, because you are transferring the mechanical energy of vibration into electrical energy. So, it is actually it implies that you are adding damping to the system. So, these are various motivations why we uh, are you know kind of you know, interested to design such systems. You can see one of these damping systems which is known as shunt damping. In this, this is a suppose an elastic structure and suppose there is an external forcing which is vibrating the structure and you have a piezoelectric patch here. Now, by adding some of these resistors okay, or capacitors or inductors with it, we call it shunting. What we do resistors must be there and you also need sometimes inductors and capacitors. What we do is that this piezoelectric material which in itself is a capacitor, it actually gets the charges. So, there will be a current which will flow and this is a resistor. So, the current will flow through this and it will get heated up and that is the way it will dissipate the energy. So, this is called shunt damping. In this case of course, you are not you know kind of storing the energy, but you are you know throwing away the energy from one mechanical system to the other system in the form of electrical energy. Now, in terms of applications this you know with the piezoelectric energy harvesting system that I have just discussed, you, you can use it in structures such as in cantilever beams, in plates, okay, in various types of forms and this can be used to power systems like wireless sensor network. Okay. So, suppose I am talking about a long bridge. Okay. So, this is like a long bridge system suppose we are talking about. Okay. Now, this long bridge system okay, that we have let us say and we can have various sensors to actually sense what is the loading on the bridge, so that the bridge does not fail. Right? Now, these sensors they are quite remotely located, right? the river is flowing like this. So, how do I power each one of these sensors and how do they cross talk with each other? If only I have power they can do it, this is actually put in the form of wireless sensor network or WSN and we can power it. If we have a small piezoelectric harvester by the side of each one of them, which actually converts the bridge vibration into electrical energy and then powers the system. Then there are things like portable electronic devices, implanted biomedical devices which needs to be powered. So, the body energy can be harvested, micro electromechanical systems, micro air vehicle applications, data transmitters etcetera. There are many, many applications like that. I will talk about a specific you know applications in our context. So, this is uh, for example, the body health monitoring. There are so many different places where you can have it as you can see the picture itself. So, this is a bridge part, data transmissions etcetera and this is for the micro air vehicle. The specific application that I am talking about is for our applications at IIT, what we are developing is called the NSVS system for the country. It is Nirasara Sayamashista Vaitsala. Okay. So, Nirasara that means aquatic, Sayamashista that means autonomous and Vaitsala is actually laboratory. So, this is actually aquatic autonomous laboratory and what is it? It is used for water quality observations and as you can see that the idea here is that you put such a platform on the on a river. Okay. So, which is having all sorts of sensors which actually uh, for example, senses various parameters of the river. Now, this platform that sensors that you are putting because this platform is at a remote location, these are the things that will need actually energy harvesters. So, in this case 
for example, the number of uh, you know sensing that you need there are many like pH sensing, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand, fecal coliform presence, total coliforms. Okay. So, there are many such things about 68 parameters, okay. uh, but these currently are actually measured at only 110 or 200 locations at most all together some 300, 400 locations for a river which is so long. So, it is actually data is insufficient and at a current condition you do not get a picture of pollution properly. So, what on the other hand this autonomous systems that will be actually working on various places as you can see this red things are actually talking about the stretches where it is most polluted. Okay. So, in various such polluted stretches these autonomous systems will be placed and they can actually extract the pollution data. Now, in order to do such things you need to have a energy harvester in the autonomous systems and that is where we are designing piezoelectric energy harvesting system. So, how do you design such a system? Let us talk about a very simple model of an energy harvester and let us talk about the selection of energy harvesting material, vibration uh, harvesting device design, energy harvesting circuits etcetera. So, let us consider a cantilever based energy harvesting system. So, in this particular case uh, you know we have shown a very simple single degree of freedom model as you can see it has three parameters mass, stiffness and damper and while the mass is moving with uh, motion z t the whole system is excited because of the base excitation y t. Now, this kind of system can be actually modeled from various actual system like this particular system if you look at it that this is a cantilever beam which is made of say piezoelectric material and there is a mass at the end of it. So, this system can be actually you know similarly modeled like a equivalent mass that equivalent mass is the mass of this particular system as well as mass of this particular system as well as the mass of the beam all together is the equivalent mass. Then stiffness can be predominantly the bending stiffness of the beam and then the damping material you know constant for the uh, beam itself. So, all these things together you can actually model is a single degree of freedom system which is getting a base excitation y and it is moving at a particular point we are interested suppose at the end mass point with a motion x or wherever you are lumping at that point with a motion x. Now, with this system you can actually write the governing equations of motion then of the system with a simple trick that you define a new parameter z which is x minus y which is the net displacement of the mass. So, then you can write this as m z double dot as the inertia force c z dot as the damping force k z as the spring force and that equals to minus m y double dot. So, that is you know that will come up if you do the you know force balance of such a system. Now, once you get this uh, you know governing equation you can actually further parameterize this governing equation you can actually write it in terms of the damping ratio which is c over c c. You can write it in terms of the natural frequency omega n and if you do that then you will get this entire equation in the form of what you call normal form or the modal form. And then you can actually write down the transfer function from that okay, where z s and y s are the you know z t's and y t's Laplace transformation and you will get a classical second order system okay, which has two zeros and it has you know complex conjugate poles depending on of course, the value of the xi. So, that is what is the transfer coefficient of the system. If you carry out a inverse Laplace transformation you will be able to solve it for z t and that you know takes up this normal form and you can also find out the phi which is defined by this particular expression all very simple for a single degree of freedom system. Now, you can also see 
that as omega approaches omega is the excitation frequency as that approaches omega n this denominator gets reduced to the smallest possible level and then that means that will generate maximum value of z which is what we always like to do. So, you can calculate the power of the system based on the last expression okay, which is a function of all these parameters uh, like the excitation frequency, natural frequency, damping ratio. Okay. So, you can find out and also the m uh, the equivalent mass. So, you can get the power of the system. Now, if uh, you operate it at the resonating frequency at the natural frequency when omega equals to omega n you can get maximum power out of the system because the uh, you know at resonance you are getting maximum amplitude of motion as you are getting maximum amplitude that means y will be maximum. So, y square will be even higher and you will be getting maximum power the corresponding expression at omega equals to omega n will come out to be something like this. So, that is what we always try to do. Okay. Now, there are many tricks in it because it need not be that your excitation frequency is matching with the natural frequency, then the system will not be at resonance. So, what we need to do? We need to play tricks so that the natural frequency can be controlled and in fact, by using smart materials one can do it. I am not going into the details, but these are some of the hints that I am giving which is needed for designing such a system. Now, let us look at that at this condition what is the uh, you know what are the other things like the voltage that will be generated in the piezoelectric system. To do that on that piezoelectric beam we have to consider the beam equation first which is what we have done here you know for a continuous system where you know the boundary conditions we have considered one side is fixed right. So, the deflection and the slope is 0 in one side on the other hand at the other side what you have is uh, the bending moment will be 0 accordingly this part will be 0 and also the shear force will be coming because of the end mass that is here at this part. So, you get all these four boundary conditions to solve this problem. Now, we try to solve this problem in a way of uh, by assuming certain modal shapes like the mode shapes uh, for the fixed free beam we you know this is assumed mode approach. So, we say that let us have various of this uh, you know phi i's okay. let us have various of these phi i's and if I actually sum up all these uh, phi i's we are going to get. So, each one of them is going to give us 1 w i and when I sum it up we are going to get this uh, considering n number of modes let us say we are going to get the deflection of the system. So, the w i that is the modal displacement corresponding to the ith mode. Okay. So, that w i you can actually represent it in this manner where omega is the excitation okay. this is the excitation frequency this is the excitation frequency phi x is the mode shape the ith mode shape that is the ith mode shape. and the corresponding q is the generalized coordinate. So, then you know we can uh, first find out that what are the modal displacements and then sum it up in terms of getting the total displacement of the system. Now, phi x uh, can be having this kind of an expression with a beta uh, term and you can get the q t by solving this system. Okay and that is the modal participation factor psi. So, using all these things you should be essentially able to compute this w i and as you are computing w i the you will be able to compute the displacement of the system w. Then this w this is w then that you can use in terms of finding out the strain and once you know the strain you can actually find out the voltage by using that constitutive relationship and once you know the voltage you will be also able to find out the final thing that is how much of power will be generated by this system. So, that once I you know I am able to find it out then I know that you know how to actually uh, design such a system in order to draw maximum power out of this system. So, this is what 
is a typical of a energy harvesting system. And a real life system of uh, you know would may have actually not just one of such harvesters, but as you can see that you know hundreds or thousands of such each one of them. And once their effect gets integrated in each one of them, you are getting the complete energy harvesting system out of it. Okay. So, this is a layout of a 6 micro cantilever energy harvesting system and a layout mask is for 4 inch waiver close up uh, view is what that we are finding out in this particular case. So, this actually gives us all about energy harvesting system and in the next lecture we will talk about self filling materials and systems. Thank you.